The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Welcome, thanks for having me. Today, Jim explains the growth of the Fed's reverse repo facility. The amount of money parked at the Fed's reverse repo facility topped $2 trillion last week. How, how bad is it? How big yeah. is it? Let's go to the first chart and as you mentioned, uh, this shows you the uh, explosion of growth. It is now over $2 trillion. Let me explain what the reverse repo facility is. The Fed usually talks about it from their standpoint. It's a reverse repo from the Fed, but their counterparties, which I'll get to in a second, it's a repurchase agreement. It is an agreement to post collateral with them. You post securities with them. They pay you an interest rate. If you, and you get those securities back at the end of that trade. It is an overnight trade. And I'll talk more about that when we get there. But right now it is exploding higher. It's over $2 trillion. And as far as how big it is, the second chart shows you the number of counterparties that are actively bidding on it. It is 99 as of last Friday. Now, the only other times it was higher was the end of the year at 103 and the end of the first quarter at 100 that usually at the end of the quarters, as I highlight here, you'll get a lot of people that will show that they're holding reverse rep or repo or Fed reverse repo because it's a safe instrument. And they wanna show that their portfolio is structured with safe securities. So you get that quarter end uh, bump. Uh, on Friday, we got the highest number that was not a quarter or a year end. So who uses this? So let's go to the next chart. <laughs> And this shows you the number of counterparties. So the Federal Reserve, you have to qualify in order to use this program. And it was started in 2010. And the orange on the chart is money funds. And there's currently 104 money funds that can use it. Uh, there's 15 banks and there's 15 uh, federal agencies or uh, uh, GSEs. So if in the latest issue of this, 99 counterparties used it, even if you assumed all 15 banks and all 15 GSEs used it, that still implies 69 of the 99 counterparties were money funds. And that is what the majority of this is. So if we go to the next chart, what that shows is the Fed doesn't break down who uses the facility, but money market mutual funds, because they're also SEC regulated, have to report their holdings on a monthly basis. So the black line on the top chart shows you the total size of reverse repo through the end of August, because this is monthly and that's the latest number we have. And the, and the bars show you government mutual money market mutual funds, prime money market mutual funds, and tax exempt or muni money market mutual funds. They are, as the bottom chart shows, 87% of all of the reverse repo is done by money market mutual funds. So now if we jump to the next chart, just to kind of detail this out a little bit more, here's the top 10 users of reverse repo. Fidelity comes in number one, 410 billion. Vanguard is number two at 180. This is among all the Fidelity funds, all the Vanguard money market mutual funds. JP Morgan is number three, and you can see the, the, uh, the rest of the top 10 <coughs> all the way to uh, Northern Trust at 60, basis, at $60 billion. And then finally, if we go to the last chart on this section, the top panel shows you total assets in money market mutual funds as of the end of April is $5 trillion. 1.91 of that was of those assets was held in reverse repo. The bottom chart shows that was 37.9% of all the assets in money market mutual funds. And uh, that was the highest ever. So, 88% of money market mutual of reverse repos money market mutual funds. If we go to the next chart, um, and I'll just point out this, who's the other 12%? Well, the red line on this chart is interest on reserves. 
So if you've got reserves with the uh, Federal Reserve, they will pay you interest on it. Currently, they're paying 90 basis points of interest rate or nine tenths of a percent. Interest on excess reserves, I'm sorry, the reverse repo interest rate, which is the black line, is 80 basis points. Now, how do they determine these rates? The interest on reserves is 10 basis points below the Fed's upper target. So the funds rate is currently between 75 basis points and 1%. 10 basis points below that is interest on reserves, 90 basis points. 20 basis points below that is, is uh, the reverse repo rate. But since the banks are getting 90 basis points versus 80 in the reverse repo, there's no reason for them to use it. They get a higher interest rate by using just the Fed interest on reserves. So the other 12.4% is the agencies. And the reason I detailed this is I wanted everybody to know banks don't use this. They've really never used this. This has been a tool of primarily the money market funds, mutual funds, and to a lesser extent, the federal agencies like the home loan banks, um, Fannie, Freddie, uh, and the like, uh, but largely not the banking system. So Jim, what's next then for the repo facility? Well, the other thing I wanna stick with on this chart is the black line is 80 basis points. That's what you could get paid. When you do a repo with the Fed or reverse repo from their perspective, your counterparty is the New York Federal Reserve. That is probably the safest counterparty on the planet you can have. Or you can buy over, or you could do overnight repo with your counterparty being Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Citibank, and the like. That pays the same rate, 80 basis points. Or you could buy overnight one day commercial paper issued by, say, an industrial company or consumer products company. That pays the same rate. But those, Wall Street is your counterparty or an industrial consumer products company, they're not as safe a counterparty as is the Federal Reserve. And since you can get the same interest rate from the Federal Reserve that you can get from the market, why would you ever use the market? So that's one of the reasons why you're seeing um, reverse repo explode in popularity because it's a competitive rate. Now, the orange line on this chart is one month T-bills. Uh, one month T-bills are trading significantly below that level. One month T-bills, treasury bills, your counterparty there would be the US Treasury. That's about as safe or maybe equally as safe as having the New York Federal Reserve as your counterparty. But those interest rates are much lower. Why is that? The next chart. The next chart shows daily cash balances, or this is otherwise known as the Treasury General Account. This is the government's checking account. This is what they use to pay the ongoing operations of the US government. Uh, ideally, they hold about two weeks worth of, of balances, about two weeks worth of bills, if you want to think of it in those terms, in this account. Well, since the beginning of the year, it has surged higher. Now, why is it surged higher? Because tax receipts came in much stronger than they thought. So now we've got you know almost $800 billion in this account. The federal, res the federal government it, or the treasury is only allowed to issue treasury bonds and notes and bills to the extent that spending has been authorized. In other words, what I'm trying to say is they're really not supposed to, it might be unconstitutional to say, you know what, interest rates are really low and someday in the future they might go up a lot. So we're going to issue a lot of 10 and 30 year bonds today at very, very low interest rates, way more money than we need and we'll hold that money in arrears because someday when rates go up, we won't have to issue bonds. They can't do that. They only can issue to the extent of their immediate need. Now that got a little bit fudged during COVID. Their immediate need was perceived as the coming COVID crisis and they did balloon and did a little bit of anticipatory borrowing, but only for the next several months or so. So my point is, as the Treasury's general account goes up, they cut back on T-bill issuance. They're not issuing as many. As we pointed out in that earlier chart, only 104 money market mutual funds can access the reverse repo facility from the Fed. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of um, money market funds. The rest of them have to buy T-bills. Well, if they're issuing less and the demand stays strong, the interest rate on T-bills goes down. So that has become relatively 
unattractive for those that are available to the reverse repo facility from the Fed. I'll get 80 from the Fed versus taking 70 or 60 from everybody else. Now, if we jump to the next chart, well, three month bills are trading at 1%. Why don't you just, and the repo, the reverse repo facility is 80 basis points. Why don't you buy a three month bill? You're, you're eligible to buy that. And what this chart shows you is the average yield on a money market mutual fund going back 10 or so years on the top panel. And the bottom panel shows you their average maturity in days. It's important to understand that a money market mutual fund never sells securities. They let them mature because it's very short term. So when you get into a rising rate environment and the Fed said that they're going to raise rates in June, 50 basis points, and they're going to raise rates again in July by 50 basis points. You want to shorten your maturities as, as short as you can. You want them to mature as fast as possible so you can reinvest them into higher interest rates. That's why their maturity level is now down to 25 days, which is one of the shortest periods we've seen in the last you know, 13 or 14 years because rates are going up and they want to, they want to get these mat short maturities mature and then issue them at higher rates. So. One of the things that's happening is that the, the reverse repo is very competitive. So they've been piling into it because it's also have no credit risk. Yes, you could buy a 1% T-bill at a higher rate, but the Fed's going to be raising rates. I'd rather own a one-month T-bill, let it mature at the end of June and reinvest it at a higher rate. Uh, and if I can own anything shorter than that, I would. Now, if we jump to the next chart, <laughs> it shows you on the top panel, that blue line, it's the same blue line I showed before. That's the yield on money market mutual funds. That yield is market driven. It is, it is driven by reverse repo, commercial paper, re, uh, street uh, counterparty repo, T-bills and the, and the like. That rate has gone from essentially zero to 59 basis points. The orange line on the top panel is the deposit rate you would get in a bank account, what a bank account would charge you. They're currently charging you eight basis points. Why is that number still near zero? Because for 13 years, the Fed did QE. The banks have all the reserves that they could possibly want. They don't need to raise rates to entice me to put more money in the bank uh, because they need more reserves. But money market mutual funds are going up. And that's what the bottom panel shows you is the spread. Now, we know the Fed's going to raise rates 50 basis points in June. We know they're going to raise 50 basis points again in uh, July. So that spread on the bottom should blow out another 100 basis points. That should be a powerful incentive for people to look and say, my bank account is offering me eight basis points. But by the end of July, my money market mutual fund might be offering me 125 on its way to 150. I'm going to shift all my money from my banking account to the money market account. Now, if you bank at Chase, that means taking your money out of your Chase account and putting it into a JP Morgan money market account or taking your money out of a Citibank account and putting it into a Citibank money market account. If you bank online, that's two mouse clicks in order to move that. You haven't bothered to do it now because the interest rates differential hasn't been that big, but it's about to get huge. And so we should see a gigantic swing of money towards that. If we go to the next chart. Um, we've already begun to see that. This shows you the cash balances or cash assets in all the banks in the United States. That is down a trillion dollars. People are pulling money out of their banks right now, I think in large part because of lower interest rates. Now, there's been spending a lot of that money, but notice that that's down a trillion. So if we go to the next chart, this last chart shows you assets and money market funds. That's down too, but only 200 billion. It be, uh, because more money is being spent than reallocated because the spread only started to widen in the last few weeks. So what's all this mean? What all this means is that tomorrow, we're reporting this on May 31st, tomorrow, June 1st, the Fed starts quantitative tightening. That is going to be a reduction of drain of reserves out of the banking system and people have correctly fretted. What does that mean? That's a tightening. What's that gonna mean for the economy and financial markets? Well, all this money that's going into RRPs, that is also a drain on the financials, on the reserves. It's going to a non-bank entity. It's being parked at the Fed with a lot of restrictions. It can't be used as collateral, can't be re it can't be used as a cash substitute. 
So we've got two drains starting tomorrow. One is the big swell in uh, RRP, and the other one will be formal QT starting from the Federal Reserve. As we move forward from here, if that RRP rate stays competitive, you'll still see more uh, money market funds opt to pile money into it. And if those rates between money market funds and bank deposits swells, you're going to see more money leave the banking system and go to a non-bank, a money market mutual fund, and get parked into a restrictive um, investment, which is reverse repo. Now, it's, it's perfectly fine for the money market fund to do that, and they should. It's in their interest. But it does drain reserves in another way. And at this point, it's actually draining reserves faster than QT is draining reserves. So we're about to go into an experiment of draining reserves with two open spigots, if you will, two open drains, not spigots. Um, and so money's going to come out the QT drain, and it's also coming out the reverse repo drain, because reverse repo is all about mutual funds. And it's all about mutual funds saying this is a competitive rate and a great counterparty. And as those rates that mutual funds give to investors goes up and up and banks don't because they've got enough reserves they don't need to bid for it, we're going to see even more money go into money market mutual funds, or at least that's the rational thing to do. And that means we're going to drain even more from there. So this big balance or reserve draining experiment is about to go into hyperdrive with QT because we've already had RRP reserve drains, and we'll have to see what that means for markets and what that means for the economy. And I'm of one that thinks that the enormous volatility that we've seen in markets over the last month or two has been in anticipation of this event and the beginnings of this event with RRP. Well, thank you, Jim, for your thoughts today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, we are client-driven. If you have any questions or feedback on future topics, please let us know. For further information on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, and Arbor Data Science, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.